Hey, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. This is Joyce, Joyce All Knowing Tarot. I'm doing the pink today. Happy Easter. A lot of us don't have people to celebrate Easter with. Um, I'm blessed to still have some of my family here. Um, so happy Easter to you. We did, we're not doing Easter today. Um, we actually did all of that on Friday uh, because everyone was off work at that time. So it just happened to work for our schedule. Um, today, I just want to remind you that I will be over on Johnny Tarot's Apprentice channel. That'll be live. That'll be like 6, 6-ish, six something like that. He said about 6, 6, 15. And we'll be talking all things Tarot with a couple other people. So that'll be a nice conversation. Thank you guys so much for watching my first episode of the Purple Table Talk. Um, promise more to come with that. I really enjoyed having that ability to sit down with some ladies and have a nice conversation. Anyways, um, I came today. I want to do a couple of things. I want to look at uh, Marcus Flowers. Now, he is a Democrat in the 14th District in Georgia running against Marjorie Taylor Greene. So I want to take a look and see how that looks. When I feel into that situation, I feel like Marjorie may not even be there. So that's kind of interesting that I'm feeling that. Interesting and not really interesting. But I wanted to just list down some things that I think are an example of the Republican Party. How the Republican Party seem to be very hypocritical in the things that they do. This is a party that we're watching implode. So I'm just going to remind you of some of these things. Um, during the Supreme Court hearing, prior to the Supreme Court hearing, they said that they're not going to make it a whole circus. And then they made it a whole circus. Um, the Republicans say that they support the blue, you know, the police. But then when the insurrection day came, the uh, police were getting beat with uh, fire extinguishers and, and flag poles and one even lost their life. And yet, where are the Republicans speaking on that? Um, the Republicans say that they support veterans and yet they want to make it harder, if not more difficult for veterans to even be able to sign up for their appropriate benefits. They don't want that. They say they want to uh, support lower pharmaceutical drugs, right? And yet, when they had an opportunity to sit down and put a cap on insulin to $35, uh, they refused to come to that. They say that inflation is Joe Biden creating inflation. You can't create inflation when you're spending all that time trying to clean up. We know that that's bull, but that's what they say. And yet, when they had an opportunity to come and sit down and have a meeting and devise a plan to reduce inflation, once again, Republicans were a no-show. Then you got Greg Abbott down there holding up uh, the 18-wheeler trucks supposed to do inspections and uh, we're clogged up down at the border. Uh, there's supposed to be delivery trucks at least that come two, three, four times as many as what it is now. Now it's one. In fact, today or yesterday when I went to the store, we just had a decent supply of things on the grocery store shelves. So there we are. As well as him busing up people. He ended up sending two buses uh, to D.C. with immigrants on the bus. He has no right to do that. This is, to me, a party that is imploding. We're watching it. They don't know what to do. They're just scrambling. And yet, when they're asked about specific plans on anything of how is the Republicans going to move, Mitch McConnell is the first one to say that he doesn't know. We'll know when we win. And then you've got this guy, Rick Scott, Republican in Florida, saying that um, they want to end all programs, you know, social services program. I'm talking about Social Security, and I'm getting to that age. They want to end Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, any of those programs, and double down by raising taxes. Make that make sense. That's, that's what they want to do. We're watching the debris of the Republican Party falling out. And we, unfortunately, are sort of caught in the middle of all the mess. Um, they've made up their mind that they don't want to do anything. It's amazing to me when I think about Trump's purpose. 
and he did have a purpose, and his purpose was to expose uh, everything. He didn't know that was his purpose, but he we got the sheets pulled off people's heads. We got the door pulled back, you know, like on the Wizard of Oz when they pull the drape back and they say it's just a guy back there. There's no wizard. That's the people that we find about that are in the legislative branch that are showing us that we're here for the money. They're there for the money. Um, why is somebody like Jared Kushner going to the Saudis and getting $2 billion to do what? To use for what? Especially with his dad being a whole ex-con. That is the reason why he's up in the White House working, but he never did get you know the appropriate credentials to be able to be in there. Yeah, make that make sense. And they act like we don't see that. Anyways, I wanted to just point that out to you, that there is hypocrisy. I'm not saying the Democrats, Democrats are perfect, but at least they care. They seem to care about people and the welfare of people. This government, the way it's been run, is gasping out of air, right? Because now we see it, and they know that we see it. They don't even know what to do to keep us from not seeing it, from hiding it. So you remember back in the day when Trump was trying to get elected, he said, I'm going to drain the swamp. I'm going to drain the swamp. Yeah. We first had to know there was a swamp and that there was a clog in the swamp. And now we know that. And now let's get to draining it. Uh, let me see. Let me take a look at first Marcus Flowers of Georgia. He's running for the same congressional seat that Marjorie Taylor Greene has. I didn't find much on him, so I want to look at him. Let me see. Show me Angel's eyes. He's a Democrat. I saw he was uh, pro-choice. A uh, couple other um, key Democratic points he was for. Okay, so first off, I've got the Ace of Wands for him. So this is something brand new for him, brand new opportunity that is presented to him. So Wands are usually about your careers and enterprises, businesses, and things like that. It holds a lot of potential. You can see that the there's just the tiny little sprouts on there that says that there is potential. And it's a gift for God that's being handed to him. And so... Yeah, there's, and actually, if you look in the back, there's even like, like the castle, like that's the White House way back in there that he's got to get to. He's got the desire. He's got the energy. Um, someone has say, hey, told him this is a good idea. You should follow this idea. Initially, he was like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I think he was kind of over it with a lot of the people that he saw running uh, office like Marjorie Taylor Greene would have anybody feeling over it, but I think it was over a lot of the BS that's going on and rather than sitting up and just complaining about it and feeling like I'm satisfied I'm okay I'm just sick of this and that he's once again he's being handed this opportunity twice listen take this cup take this cup you have something to offer this is what he's gonna have to work on and that's the death card and that's wonderful that this is about him really working on himself okay really being able to see that uh in the face of it all win lose or draw uh you could do this okay we need to make a change in what's happening in the government and we need to have you there we do to uh make things better i guess i want to say but also he's going to have to work on himself um i'm not sure a lot of times that's sort of the death of an ego aspect of ourselves that he needs to get rid of. And he'll have to do that in order for this to be good for him. If he does that, he gets the page of wands. And the thing about it is, is that when you have an ace, and it doesn't have to be of the same suit. You've got an ace. This is the seed of something. And then the page brings that something in. So will he want, want, uh, run? Absolutely, he will run. 
and he will do well. He's just got to make some changes inside of himself. Um, and maybe this is absolutely a rebirth for him. It was something initially he wasn't interested in. And now all of a sudden the death card comes in and says, yeah, we need you. Showtime. Showtime. Come on stage. Let's see how he'll do against Marjorie Taylor Greene. So, yes, he should be running. It, it's his time. It's his time. Will he Marjorie Taylor Greene? I'm tired. I sat up last night with my daughter, with Camille. She wanted to watch Coachella. You know, they're showing it on TV. It's live. And we watched uh, Meg the Stallion. So, yeah, we did that last night. I'm tired this morning. But I'm going to push on. Let me get my cards out here. Too. Will he beat her? Let me, I know. I don't even know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me change this. It looks good for him, by the way, but I usually do them side by side, so let me do it. Who will win this race? I told you I'm tired today, but I will wake up and come to it. Get into it. Get into it, baby. Uh, yeah, I love working with Johnny anyways. Mill had a fan encounter. <laughs> she works at Subway. And she has her name tag on. And somebody came into the store, uh, a young lady came into the store. And she was looking and looking at her. And then she said, is your mom named Joyce? And she said, yeah. I know your mom. I watch uh, I watch her channel on YouTube. I love her channel, da-da-da. I'm like, wow. Yeah. She said, I like both of you guys. I'm like, that is fantastic. That's fantastic. So, thank you. I think it's Leah. Thank you, Leah. Shout out to you. <clears throat> Fan encounters are strange because I've had them at the grocery store too. And you're sort of like, well, I'm just a, a regular lady on a YouTube channel. But um, anyways, so I'm looking at Marjorie Taylor Greene versus, um, versus uh, Marcus Flowers. Okay, so here we go. Marjorie Taylor Greene has the Four of Cups, the Hangman, and the Four of Pentacles. So this is Marjorie Taylor Greene. The Four of Cups is back again. That's Marjorie Taylor Greene, okay? Marjorie Taylor Greene, here's her deal. And I think Johnny and I talked about that. The only way she could possibly hold this position is she made some type of a change. If she really stopped spewing all that vileness against another party, uh, come out of this fake uh, Trump one aspect, walk away from the QAnon and all of that. But I don't see she wants to do that. She wants to hold on to that. She's got this desire to be right, to have power, to hold on to everything she has. Then we have Marcus Flowers, and he comes in with the Eight of Pentacles. We see the Ten of Pentacles. And we see the Four of Wands. Marcus Flowers says, I'm willing to do the work. Uh, go out, knock on doors, meet people, raise a campaign. It can be teeters, tedious. It can be tiring. But I've got what it takes. Um, eight is a very powerful number. It says that, hey, you got the potential. If you keep your nose to the grindstone, don't get distracted by the fool -a -la that she will bring to the table, if she's even there. I don't feel like she's going to be there. But don't get caught up in that. You could be very successful, and you could start your own legacy. Um, you have celebrations. This is a wonderful card of you being celebrated that you got elected in that position, taking over her position. She has struggled. You know, you think about... You've got this. It's like, uh, you want to stay, but we don't want you. This is a we don't want you. All these fours out here, right? 
four, four, four. It's almost like it's karmic because that's like the guys have come in and said, we need you to exit the building. This is her desperately trying to hold on to her power and her red with her Republican power, red Republican, trying to hold on desperately to her power. But yet she'll end up having to sacrifice it unless she makes some type of a radical change in herself, in her viewpoint. OK, this is a self-sacrifice. OK, this is actually Odin, by the way, made a self-sacrifice so you have all the wisdom of the world, all the gifts of the world. She has to make a sacrifice. He does not. All he has to do is keep his nose to the grindstone, stone, stay focused, and he ends up celebrating. So I could see Marcus winning this position. So we'll be on the lookout for that and we'll make note of that. It's Marcus Flowers, uh, 14th district in Georgia. Um, yeah, he's raised more money than she has. She has been spending her money going to Trump's stuff or donating to Trump's foolishness, um, but she's almost spending more than what she's making. And so her, contra her um, donations are getting less and less and less. So. It does not look good for Margaret. I think we saw that she wasn't going to be there or wasn't going to win. And now I see she has a true opponent that is going to win. Anyways, guys, have a wonderful Easter. I'll see you about six over at Johnny's ch channel. It's Tarot's Apprentice. And goodness, you guys have a great day. <laughs>